Hi all, it's Sunday the 28th of June and here's an update of my Sling TSI build week 11 and 12. Yeah, so the big news is that um, the right wing is now completed, almost. Um, there are a few uh, bits to be done, as you can see on this image there, the uh, on that trailing edge uh, the where you step onto the wing. Uh, I haven't finished that uh, last row, just uh, I will need to align the flaps and the ailerons uh, before I finish that just to make uh, check that uh, the alignment is correct so then I'll revert that but pretty much other than that everything was done uh, the inspector had been around and he has inspected the signed off the the frame of the wing um, before the top rivets went on uh, so it's only a matter of um, in his next visit he should be able to uh, sign off the the full wing and uh, I had a colleague over and he helped me move this in, uh, onto the wing stand and into the house uh, so that's freed up uh, space in the uh, in the workshop uh, to get on with the fuel tanks which is next a few bits here the rivets uh, at the trailing edge there I had to turn them around because um, initially I did them the other way around um, wasn't really clear in the manual but I think that might be that might interfere with the flaps so just to be on the safe side I just turned all those rivets around so the head is facing the rear um, so apart from the fuel tank pretty much most of it this is done um, I haven't put the tip on uh, the, the fiberglass tip um, that takes up a bit more space so uh, and also the landing light still needs to be installed uh, on this one but that's quite a straightforward process so not worried about that much um, yeah, so the wing stand, so I've got space for the, once the left wing is done, I'll bring that on here and do the fuel tanks separate, and I'll just only attach the fuel tanks just before painting, um, uh, before I had to move this out for, for paint prep. Uh, so the, yeah, elevator, hot personal stabilizer, and the, the two wings should be all in that stand. Yeah, and there might be some final tweaks uh, before once I align the flaps and the ailerons, um, especially some of the rivets, I'm have to grind off some uh, while I do that. Yeah, so that's now free up space in the shed. I've pretty much got my shed back uh, to do the next uh, stage of the build, which is the working on the fuel tanks. So, I think the first step on the fuel tanks is to make these jigs or kind of wing stand or like a fuel tank stand uh, so on the build manual there are two templates provided um, you basically cut that out and cut that shape out in a, a piece of plywood or uh, I had some um, kitchen chipboard um, sheets left over so I just used those um, I did end up buying a, a mini router um, it's quite a good tool I think um, and um, because the cuts made of a jigsaw are never as never good so um, plus I needed some for some other uh, uh, woodworking bits and and also this has come handy uh, because um, uh, with the uh, the fuel caps that are provided with the TSI kit um, the the holes that are punched in the fuel tank skin are a bit too small for the uh, for the new uh, fuel caps uh, I think they switch suppliers from and air to Newton uh, and that's why the mismatch the six holes that are drilled uh, to hold, to rivet that that does align but just the the clearance for the that outer ring where the cap is uh, that's uh, you need to sh I think it needs uh, a form all the way around needs to be trimmed and I did use the router for that a little bit and then do that did the final bit uh, with the Dremel um, and yeah with the fuel tanks I think it's um, a, a lot of, uh, of the work is about preparing the parts and uh, because you have to apply the sealant um, uh, from what I've seen online and what everyone's been doing and also it's mentioned in the manual that uh, all the mating surfaces where you'll be applying sealant you have to uh, scotch bright them and preferably also acid etch them um, to you know have a good surface so that the pro seal sticks to it 
so yeah that's been uh, been doing just uh, trying to go through all of them uh, one thing I noticed that um, some of the uh, the front and rear channel uh, does come dimpled but it has left little bits of plastic uh, which is stuck to that uh, to the to ra uh, around the dimples so you just make sure that you you know uh, go through them and take them all out because uh, you don't want little plastic bits in your fuel tank uh, I believe uh, Evan Brunier also pointed this out so I kept uh, an eye out for this uh, when I, while I was doing this stage uh, yeah and um, yeah once it was all scotch brighted um, um, all those uh, especially where all the uh, where you'll be riveting so that the ceiling will have to sit um, then it was time to clean it all up uh, so yeah you see you can see the skins here the goal was to get it so that the water will nicely sheet off uh, so that there's no oil so it's been um, nicely scotch, scotch brighted then washed then applied degreaser or like a washing up liquid and then uh, thoroughly degreased and I'll also dip that in alumi prep so that it leaves that acid edge um, so it's a nice clean surface um, I'm going to do alodining on these fuel tanks because I think that's the best way of uh, corrosion protecting them because on the wings I will be using uh, corrosion X uh, but there's no way of getting the corrosion X inside these fuel tanks so that's so um, uh, I'll dip that in aldine uh, it's started raining a bit uh, in the evening so I couldn't finish that bit uh, all the skins and the channels uh, so I had to move everything inside the workshop as it started raining but I still managed to finish all the uh, the little bits all the you know, all the ribs and the end plates uh, they've all been aldined and it's come out quite well um, the brackets uh, all of these things sit inside the fuel tank and so I thought it would be nicer that if they're all aldined again it's the same here I think uh, all, all the uh, all, all these ribs uh, it's basically deburring them uh, and all these holes where the rivets have to go in of just uh, running them through the drill as well because you don't want to do that once it's clear coat in place or once you applied pro seal you don't really want to go through with the drill bits to uh, get the soles uh, the holes to be the right size so yeah again even though these channels the front and rear channels do come dimple from the factory you still have to run the the 3.2 millimeter drill through them yeah, so...